Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of our Pipedrive training videos. In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between leads and deals inside of Pipedrive. This is a common question, especially from new Pipedrive users, as there's often confusion around what is a lead versus a deal, how do I convert leads into a deal, and what's this all about? So that's what I'm going to be discussing in this video. If you have any questions at the end, feel free to leave me a comment down below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one support with setting up or optimizing Pipedrive for your business, or if you need a quote for your actual Pipedrive subscription, then please click the links in the description below to learn more about our consulting and licensing options. Okay, let's get going. Now let me start by explaining what is a lead. And I'm gonna start with leads because in Pipedrive, we start with leads and then we convert those leads later on into deals. Now, if you think about your sales process for a sec, a lot of the clients we work with need to qualify their prospects or their leads first to determine is the product or service that we have to offer a good fit for this particular person? And then if so, we qualify that lead and we turn it into a deal because not everyone you're cold calling or reaching out to is going to be a good fit for the thing that you're selling. So that's why we have leads that we then convert into deals. Let's take a look at what that looks like over in Pipedrive. So here I am on the deal pipeline view. I'm on the deals page here, and this is one of my sales pipelines. This is probably the screen you're most used to seeing when you first log in to Pipedrive. And of course, as you probably know already, you can switch between different pipelines which represent the different revenue streams or sales processes in your business. Now, leads is a separate part of the navigation up here. So I'll go to the leads inbox here, and this is where we can start off those sales conversations. So a good example of how to use the lead inbox would be, let's say you've attended some kind of trade show or you've got a list of prospects that they've never heard from you before. We want to now start calling them or emailing them and, and trying to qualify, is this lead a good fit for the product or service that we have to offer? Now, you can manually create a lead by clicking the plus lead button up here. And when you create a lead, you're actually creating a new object in Pipedrive, and that lead is linked to a contact person and an organization. So if I type the name of an, uh, a contact in here, I can link an existing contact like Bruce Wayne, and it's pulled in his organization, Wayne Enterprises, or I could create a brand new contact and a brand new organization when I create this lead. And if I go ahead and click save now, I've now created a brand new lead which is linked to the Bruce Wayne contact and the Wayne Enterprises organization. Now, this is an important nuance to wrap your head around because in some CRMs, if I go to the contact here, the contact itself is the lead and you change a contact into a lead. We're not doing, we're not doing that in this case in Pipedrive. The contact remains as it is and instead we're creating a new object, the lead, and which we can see here linked on the contact. So this lead, the Wayne Enterprises lead is linked to the Bruce Wayne contact. So we've actually got the lead, the person and the organization all linked together. Now, the other option, if I don't want to manually create leads is you can import data from a spreadsheet and you can upload your spreadsheet here. The best way to set up your spreadsheet is like this, where I've got columns for the different fields that I need to map in Pipedrive. So I've got a column for my lead title, which if I go back to my leads inbox, this title column here, this is just the name of the lead essentially. So if you want to have a specific naming convention, maybe the organization name, the word lead, you can, you can set that up in your spreadsheet as the lead title. If you want to fill in any specific fields, for example, I have in our Pipedrive account a field called deal source. If I can find it, here it is. I have a drop down menu where I can fill in where did this, this lead or deal come from. And you can see I've got this trade show option here. So I could have a column in my spreadsheet if I want to fill in specific custom fields. And then here I've got the organization that I want to create or link this lead, this lead to. So I want to create a new organization called Minico with a certain label and a certain address. And then I've got the person's information. So what is the person I want to create or link this lead to? So um, this is the person's first name, last name, email, and phone. 
And so if I set up my spreadsheet like this, where all the information is on one row, when I import this, Pipedrive is going to create a lead with, with these lead fields and organ uh, linked to an organization and linked to a contact person. And that way, I can very quickly import a list of prospects uh, in one go, and I don't have to sit there and manually create them individually. Okay, so we've now manually created or imported some leads into this leads inbox. Now, this view that we're looking at, this table, this is customizable, and a lot of the clients that we work with, they like to customize these columns or headings so that they can see all the important information uh, they need to about their leads. And I can customize this on the right hand side. If I click this little cogwheel icon, I can turn off any columns that I don't need. Maybe I don't need to see that lead created date. I could turn that off or maybe email message count. So I can turn off fields that I don't need. And then up here, I can, I can pull in new fields from the lead, the person or the organization that I want to see. So maybe it's useful for me to see the person's address so that I know where they're located. I can bring that column in and maybe drag that over here so it's a little bit more visible for me. So now I can start selling. I can start working my leads inbox. And obviously this part is gonna depend a little bit on your sales process. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is click open um, one of these leads. Now, maybe I call this person, I've got their phone number down here. I could click and if I'm using a calling integration like Just Call or something similar, I could start a conversation from Pipedrive. I've got the email tab up here where if you connect your Gmail or your Microsoft email, you can send an email from Pipedrive using a template. And I'll link up here a video that I made a little while ago about how to use the email features in Pipedrive. On my lead, I can store notes and I can log activities. So as I'm calling or emailing and talking to these leads, I can keep all of the information that I'm gathering here on this leads screen. So I might put a note in here with a bit of information about this particular prospect. If I'm on a phone call, you know, I'd log an activity. And so I've, I've done a call. I'd put my call notes, call notes go here. So I can see when did I last call them? What did we uh, talk about? And what I would probably do as well is schedule my next activity. If I'm gonna follow up tomorrow, I can quickly schedule an activity here. Now, the whole time I'm working my leads inbox, I'm trying to qualify this lead. As I said at the beginning, I'm trying to work out, is this person a good fit for the product or service that we have to offer? Now, when I qualify them, I can then click this button down here to convert this lead into a deal. Or if I'm having a conversation with this lead and I determine, you know what, our product or service, it's not the right fit for this person, or they don't have the budget, they don't qualify, I can archive the lead. So if I click that archive button, I'm not going to on this one, it's just gonna put this, the leads into this archive section here. It's just a way of kind of hiding the lead. I've still got all the information that I can refer back to if I need to, but I've cleared it out of my leads inbox. I don't want our team prospecting to that person or calling that person again. But obviously the goal really is to qualify them and convert them into deals. So let's go ahead and convert the lead into a deal. And when I do this, you see we're actually now creating again a new object. This deal is gonna be linked to the same contact, Bruce Wayne, and to Bruce's organization, Wayne Enterprises. And I can choose which of my sales pipelines do I want to add this deal to. So I'm just gonna go with my sales pipeline, and I'm gonna add this deal to the qualified lead stage. So let's go ahead and save that now. So now, if I, uh, down here, I'm just gonna cl click that view link. Now, I've converted the lead into a deal. The lead is gone, the lead doesn't exist anymore. We've converted it into a deal. And you can see all of my historical notes, my activities, my emails have all carried across. So all of that now still exists just on the deal instead. Now, something you're going to want to have a think about yourself or perhaps discuss as a sales team is what are we looking for or what is the criteria to qualify that lead and convert it into a deal? 
If you work in sales, you've probably heard the phrase a sales qualified lead kind of thrown around and used a bit. So you need to think about what are we looking for? Maybe there's like a minimum budget we need. Maybe they need to have the right, uh, be in the right situation or circumstance to buy your product or service. Now, once you convert that lead into a deal, we're continuing the conversation. Our job's not done. We still need to gather information, uh, send a quote, negotiate, but we're gonna continue that sales journey using a deal. And there are a couple of additional features that I can now use while I'm working this deal and moving it through our sales pipeline. Firstly, along the top, we can see what stage of the sales pipeline is this deal in at the moment. So if I move this deal to meeting arranged, I've updated the deal stage there. And when I go back to my pipeline, very visually here in this Kanban board, I can see what deals I have at different stages of my sales journey. Let's reopen the deal again there. So I can update the stage that we're in and I can and I can manage that there. I can also use some of these other features here. I've got the documents tab and I'll link up here a video I made a little while ago about how to use the smart documents feature inside Pipedrive. So from here, I can uh, send contracts to be digitally signed or I could create quotes uh, to send out. I've also got the invoicing page where if I connect an accounting app like QuickBooks, I could generate an invoice from here. And one of the other really nice things uh, about managing a deal through a sales pipeline is the fields that you have on the, on the left here. So these fields that we've customized, and again, I'll link another video up here that I've created about how to create and manage custom fields. I can set some of these fields to be required when I move a deal to a particular stage of my sales process. So before I move the deal into this stage, I have to fill in the value, the pain point, the deal type, the source, budget. So let's put that in there. Test. Actually, let's fill all this in now. And so Pipedrive isn't going to let me progress the deal to the next stage until I fill in that important information. So that's a nice feature that we have to make sure that my, me and my sales team are putting in all the necessary information that we need. And actually, as I'm talking there, you might see some new activities being generated. So that is done through an automation that I've created where as I move my deal through these stages, I can automatically assign activities to myself or to my team. Now, one final point I will make here about leads versus deals is one of the reasons we have the leads inbox is so that if I do have a long list, maybe I've got hundreds or even thousands of prospects here. It's sort of my cold calling list where we just want to start reaching out to these people and, and prospecting to them. I don't really want hundreds or thousands of leads cluttering up and messing up my sales pipeline. So that's one of the other nice things about using Pipedrive in this way is I can keep all of those, that, that sort of cold call list, completely separate from the qualified sales opportunities we're talking to right now. I don't want this pipeline getting filled with low quality opportunities that don't even qualify for our service. And by, you, by keeping this pipeline nice and clean, I can see what is the number of deals and the value of deals we have in progress right now for those good quality active sales conversations that we're having. The other reason to use the leads inbox is if you are using the lead booster add-on. So if I go to Pipedrive's pricing briefly, there is this lead booster add-on, which gives you access to uh, some additional products or features inside Pipedrive. You get the chatbot, the live chat interface, the prospector tool, web forms, and scheduler. And if I go back to my lead inbox here, you can see those features here. So you can configure Pipedrive and you can configure a chatbot to then embed on your website, or you could create a contact form, which when somebody fills it in, it then creates a new lead in this inbox. So that's really nice because if, I, if somebody goes to my site, they fill in our contact form or they engage with our chatbot, that can automatically create a lead I can then call them, I can qualify them before I convert the lead into a deal. Or if I'm using, for instance, the prospector tool, this is where I can build a list of the target demographics that I'm looking for. So great, again, if I'm doing sort of cold outreach, I can put in my target demographics, I can create a lead, add it to my lead inbox, and then start qualifying. Now we've worked with hundreds of clients and quite often we've shown people how to create a lead and convert it into a deal. But we get the feedback that people prefer to use deals because they really like having that visual pipeline and being able to move a deal through those stages or columns. And so we get asked the question, can I not just have a separate pipeline for qualifying leads and then move a deal, which represents a lead, onto your sales pipeline once they're qualified? Now, 
you could do that. And some of the clients we work with have chosen to do it that way. I'm not a big fan of doing it that way. I don't recommend it because it can mess up some of your reporting and it makes it harder to work out what percentage of those leads actually convert into deals. So if you do want to keep track of the stage or status of the lead, you know, who have we reached out to, who have we made contact with, then I actually think it's better to do this using a custom field. So if I go to my company settings here, and you will need to be an admin in order to do this, let's go down to data fields, and we're going to create a new custom field on the lead slash deal object. So let's create one, and we're just going to call this uh, lead status. And if I want, I can add it to one of my groups. Let's just put this into uh, summary. And I would recommend setting this up as a single option dropdown. So I could have options for attempting contact, contact made, uh, gathering more info. There we go. And I might even, actually, I might even put numbers in there as well so that we can sort um, kind of chronologically. So let's uh, put some numbers in there. So I'll save that field now. And if I go back to my leads inbox and I click that cogwheel icon again, I can bring in that lead status field that I just created. And I'll just move it from the right hand side here. Let's bring that all the way over to the left. Let's just put it right there. And so from there, I can now, when I'm looking at one of my leads, I can click that field and I can change the status here. So we'll say attempting contact. Let's open Bob Bob. We'll put him as contact made. And so now, as I fill in these lead statuses, I could sort by that column if I want to kind of organize them into who I've attempted contact, uh, who, who I've made contact with, or I may even create a filter. If I come to my filters here, I could have a filter for everyone that I've made contact with or everyone I'm gathering information for. So again, I'm of the opinion I, I prefer this approach. I think it's better for reporting if we convert the lead into a deal rather than having multiple sales pipelines, which I feel gets confusing. So let me begin wrapping up this video by explaining how we could then report on what percentage of leads convert into deals. This is a really useful metric to understand because it helps us understand like, is the marketing that we're doing generating good quality leads that convert into good sales opportunities? If we're doing all this marketing and generating lots of leads that don't qualify, maybe we need to change our strategy. So if I go to my insights here, I can create a new report and I'm gonna to come to the lead conversion report type. So this shows me at the moment for leads that were created this year, and I've sorted them by source in this case, we can see what is the number of leads, um, or I could change that to the lead value that uh, convert into deals. So I can see here for manually created leads, 78% convert into deals. Or I could um, change my x-axis, maybe instead of showing source, uh, I, I might want to sort by the lead owner so I could see who on my sales team is uh, performing really well. So Kayla's converting about 20% of her leads into deals. Paul, I'm converting 100%. That's great. Uh, obviously, this is our demo account. There's not a lot of data in here, but this is a really nice way of understanding who on the team is performing well and uh, what percentage of our leads are we converting into deals. So there we go. That is a look at leads versus deals in Pipedrive. I hope this video has cleared some things up for you, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment down below. And one more time, if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or learning how to get the most out of Pipedrive, or you need, need a quote for your subscription, click the links in the description down below to contact us and we'd love to chat. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.